Welcome to the Radio Vault. Uh, today we are taking a look at uh, February 1st, 1939, as we continue our jog through 1939, working our way up through the World War II years in real time. Uh, we are g going to go all the way up. The plan is to go all the way up to December 31st, 1945, and relive World War II on a day-by-day -day basis. And... Uh, just right now, there wasn't much going on, so there was was not many programs recorded. We only have uh, an undated Pat O'Daniel and his Hillbilly Boys, a program of, I think, great country music, uh, roots music from uh, uh, back back then, and and we also have a Lone Ranger episode, and I think you'll enjoy both of those. Well, let's uh, start things off. Here's Pedro Daniel and the Hillbilly Boys. As usual at this time, the W. Leo Daniel Flower Company of Fort Worth, Texas, is proud to present another 15 minute program by Pedro Daniel and his Hillbilly Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, friends everywhere. It's these uh, wide awake hillbilly boys back uh, to play a little 15 minute program sponsored by the W. Leo Daniel Flower Company. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, manufacturers of the leading flower in Texas known as hillbilly. And to start our program off, well, I think I ought to, we ought to do this number. Well, I think I ought to dedicate it to Mickey Wiki. It says, sing on, brother, sing. Now I had a dream the other night. Sing on, brother, sing. And it filled me with an awful pride. Sing on, brother, sing. I saw a ghost that said to me, I was counting off your days. And I made up my mind right then, I was going to change my way. I was going to get ready, I was going to get ready, I was going to get ready for the Lord to call me home. I was going to get ready, I was going to get ready, I was going to get ready for the Lord to call me home. That ghost he handed me the book, and he said to me, just take a look. Sing on, brother, sing. I saw a page of shoot the dice, and a page of breath of sin, and there was 40 pages more for nothing else to see. Well, I'm trying to get ready, I'm trying to get ready, I'm trying to get ready, oh, Lord, he called me home. I'm trying to get ready, I'm trying to get ready, I'm trying to get ready, oh, just a day to come. cheerful disposition makes a splendid combination. But to make the morning bright and the disposition cheerful, it is absolutely necessary for your family to have a delicious, nourishing breakfast. Can anything help to start the day off right better than a big plate of those white, fluffy hillbilly biscuits together with a cup of piping hot hillbilly coffee? Serve them to your family every morning and see those smiles spread over their faces. The trick is turned. Right then and there, the day has been started off right. Remember, the goodness of pure, wholesome hillbilly products 
is guaranteed. Insist in the man hillbilly. See to it that your family has the best of good, wholesome food. Please pack the biscuits, Pappy. Thank you very much, Leon, old boy. And let's see, we're going to get on here with the program. We're going to ask a little horse to walk right over here and tell you about my blue heaven. <laughs> that you folks send in. That's right. We get harmony numbers and requests for harmony numbers and all kinds of numbers for each uh, each man in the band uh, to do a certain number. And they have their own list and they put down the numbers as they come in in order and get to them just as quickly as possible. Right now, here's a harmony number that we've had many requests for. Leon and Horace will sing it. Yeah. Maple on the Hill. Quiet country that is stood a maple on the hill That I sat with my one eater long ago Boy, go. When the stars were shining brightly And we heard the whippoorwill Then we vowed to love each other We are growing old and feeble Yet the stars are shining bright And we listen to the murmur of the rill Will you always love me, darling, as you did those starry nights When we sat beneath the maple on the hill We would sing love songs together when the birds had gone to bed And would listen to the murmur of the rill Then I'd fold my arms around you, lean your head upon my breast 
folks, but the old clock says our time is all gone. So until you hear us again through the medium of your radio, this is Pat O'Daniel and all the hillbilly boys saying so long. I like mountain music, good old mountain music, played by the real hillbilly band. I like bread and biscuits, big white puppy bitches, hillbilly crowd don't make some grand. So we sing and play and try to make folks happy. We hope you stay. Fast the biscuits, Pappy. Got a carter letter. Go down your neck and feel pretty bad. This program was brought to you through the courtesy of the W. Leo Daniel Flower Company of Fort Worth, Texas, in appreciation of your patronage of Hillbilly Products. If you are enjoying these trips back in time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you would like to get notifications of new uploads, click on the bell icon. And that was another good episode of Country Music with Pat O'Daniel and his Hillbilly Boys. Uh, now we move on to the Lone Ranger, 7.30 on uh, Mutual, like usual, almost like clockwork, three times a week. Another thing that was like clockwork was Earl Grazer playing the Ranger from... 1933 to 39, he never missed a performance. Uh, beginning in 1939, uh, he was given a two-week vacation, and they would run a, a, a mutual would, would uh, write up a, a two-week story that did not feature the uh, Lone Ranger up until the very last episode, and that would the ranger would come in and solve the uh, storyline right at the end, just in time. Uh, so Earl Grazer was a pretty hard worker. Well, let's hear Merrick's Outlaws on The Lone Ranger. the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. Eastern financiers were turned to the west. There they saw a great new country ready for development. Railroads were built, the cattle industry was encouraged, and capital was provided for mining ventures. But there were some unscrupulous men with the power of wealth behind them who tried to exploit the new territory and rob the honest settlers. The masked rider of the plains fought their hired gunmen and exposed their schemes. It was he, more than any other man, who preserved the true American democracy of the frontier. Return with us now those thrilling days when the West was young. An adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading south for the Rio Grande! Hello, Silver! Hooray! Our 
story opens in a luxurious New York office. A group of sleek, well-fed men are sitting around a large table and... Gentlemen, you've uh, heard from uh, this fellow, uh, what's his name, Link Fisher, Merrick? I have. He replied by Pony Express. I have his message here. And his message? His report is most encouraging. <laughs> most encouraging. Finley, Rogers, Logan... I believe we stand well in the way to double our fortune. Good. Good. Is uh, Link Fisher to be trusted? As long as we make it worth his while. Oh, he's to be trusted. He'll not get half what we'll pay him from anyone else. I've heard some ugly things about the man. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I know he's the man for us. Well, uh, what does he say? Has he found anyone to act for us south of the border? He has. Now, let me see. He writes, uh, yes, a man by the name of Fernando Perez. Perez? A half-breed. Quite a fellow from what Fisher writes. He makes his headquarters in the mountains beyond the Rio Grande. I see. Calls himself a liberator. Calls himself that? Others are calling less polite things. Oh. An outlaw, I suppose. An accomplished one. Fisher writes that Perez has gathered quite a band of half-breeds, peons and crooks, north of the border. So far, he's stood off the troops of two governments. I think with the money and arms uh, supplied by us, he'll have the strength to seize... Uh, most of the southern basin of the Rio Grande. And uh, in exchange for money and arms? We get the concessions we want. Hmm. Some of the finest grazing lands on the continent. The right to develop what mines we wish. And a promise not to interfere with the transportation of gold and cattle north of the border. Hmm. But what happens to our investment if Mexico City sends enough troops to drive Perez out? We'll make every effort to see that that doesn't happen. And if by chance uh, those efforts fail, uh, yes. then I think we can still make out a good case in our favor. We can claim that we entered into negotiations with Perez in good faith, that we believed his government stable. Nothing need be known of the assistance we gave him. <laughs> now, gentlemen... Uh, I'm convinced we have nothing to fear, unless, of course, uh, unless uh, we're to be frightened by a masked man. What's that? You say a masked man, Merrick? What nonsense is that? Yes, I thought that would amuse you. Ling Fisher writes that he believes some fellow out there they call the uh, Lone Ranger suspects what's up. Well, who does he represent? No one but himself, as I understand it. Oh, you mean this Link Fisher really believes that one man, a masked man, could make us trouble? Huh. Well, that is amusing. <laughs> Fisher must be nervous. Well, are we all agreed to go through with this? One of us should go down there, don't you think, Merrick? I'd like to know more about Perez. I'm going myself. Oh, yes? So I'll leave before the end of the week. I intend to talk to Perez personally. And I want to see what difficulties there will be in getting the arms across the border. Oh, if you're going, I'm satisfied. <laughs> I don't envy you the trip. Oh, it won't be so bad. I'll take the cars to Kansas City, stagecoach to El Paso. I'll meet Fisher not far from there. And at the first opportunity, he and I will slip across the border and into... <laughs> you don't take your riding horseback so good, do you, Mr. Mary? Saddles no worse than some of the stages on the way out here. <laughs> I reckon not. <laughs> Much further have we to go? Jerry, we ain't no more than cross the Rio. You've got to get to them foothills up ahead before we meet up with Perez. Foothills? Well, it's a my dark to see good, Mr. Merrick. But you just look on ahead. And where you see something that's blacker than the rest of what you can see, then you're looking at the hills. Perez is expecting us, Link. Yep. Told him we'd cross the border tonight. You'll be waiting for us, all right. By the way, that masked man you mentioned, the Lone Ranger... What on earth made you worry about him? If you was acquainted in the West, there's something you wouldn't have to ask. But you wrote as though he were quite alone. Uh-huh. He is, setting for a redskin. <laughs> then I don't see you. No need for interrupting, Mr. Merrick, but it's a fact you don't see. You can take my word for it. I'd rather have a whole regiment of soldiers after me than that, Omri. He's plain poison. And when he takes a hand in the game, you can bet the fur is going to fly. Yes, sir, he... I represent millions in money. You have a dozen good men, and from what you told me, Perez has a band of at least 300. That masked man couldn't possibly spoil our plans. Didn't say he could. He's likely to pester us some. How do you know he got wind of our plans? One of my boys seen his engine pod talking with the breed from Perez's gang. Lem had a hunch the engine was pumping the breed. Was the breed questioned afterwards? Sure, Lem never got close enough to be sure which one he was. <laughs> right word, if you ain't. The only real ticklish job we got is getting them arms across the Rio. After that, it should be clear sailing. How many government troops are on this side of the border? Just the company. Captain Gonzalez commanding. They ain't nowhere near here. 
fact is, they don't even know where Perez is hiding out. And if they did, it wouldn't do them no good. They ain't half armed. Yeah, I see. And besides, what was that? A horse. Sure as shooting. Pull that. Oh, oh, oh. that. Oh. Listen. See if you can hear it again. No? Uh, maybe it wasn't nothing. Come on. Get up there. Get up. Get up there. 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 Stay there, Silver, old fellow. Mast, Silver, Tonto. It's the Lone Ranger. Dismount. Keep an eye on them, Tonto. Oh, Tonto, watch them. Dismount. This is an outrage. What in tarnation do you want? I've been waiting for you, Link, and you, Merrick. Look here, you can't touch us. We're not in the States. And I'm not the law. Yes. There's a hold-up. You can call it that. Stand where you are and keep your hands raised. If you move, Tonto will fire. What are you aiming to do? I'm searching Merrick. I'm not carrying money. And I'm not interested in your money. What are these? Oh, the letters. They can't do you any good. We'll see. I think I'll keep them. This is robbery. Merrick, you're up to something, and I'm going to find out what it is. You! I you suspect can't... certain things. I'm going to make sure my suspicions are correct. They are, I like. Ain't you acting kind of high-handed? Link, I know you and your reputation. Merrick here represents interests that are among the most powerful in the country. Yeah? Well, what of it? I believe Merrick is behind some plan which, if successful, will threaten the good relations existing between the States and Mexico. He and his kind are responsible for the suspicion which the people on this side of the border hold us. You and your kind, Link, will play any scheming crooked game. The stakes are worth your while. You don't know a thing. You're guessing. I had to make guesses up to this point, Merrick. But with these letters to identify me as you, I won't have to guess much longer. Hey, are you crazy enough to go to Perry's camp and palm yourself off for Merrick here? Perhaps. You'll never get away with it. It's worth trying. What, uh, what are you going to do with us? There's a Pueblo village a few miles from here. You can start walking. You're keeping the horses? We are. No, wait, please. Go on your way before I change my mind. But I, come on, Mr. Merrick. Ain't no use arguing with these hombres. I told you what the masked fellow was like. Walk miles. It's not too far. Uh, come on. You'll pay for this. I won't forget. You'll pay. Come on to save your breath for walking. Why, you let him go. I have a reason, Kimasabi. You go to outlaw camp? Yes, in disguise. But then get horse from village, ride fast to outlaw... Tell outlaw you, missed feller. Exactly. Tonto, we're going to try an old trick. And what that? If they hurry, Merrick and Link will reach that village in an hour. They'll buy or borrow horses and get to Perez just as fast as they can. Uh-huh. I'm going to pose as Merrick and be with Perez when they arrive. I'll give them the chance to expose me. Mm, me not savvy. I'll be in no real danger because I'll be expecting them. As soon as they arrive, I'll make my escape. Mm, then what do? They'll see me leave and feel free to talk over their plans. They won't know that you're close by. Um, that good idea. There are only a few men with Perez now. Most of them are farther back in the hills. Oh, uh, that's right. Perez is in that cabin at the mouth of Spruce Canyon. If he keeps guard in his usual manner... You shouldn't have any trouble approaching. I'm trying to do that. And if anything does go wrong, if they do get the drop on me, you'll be there to help. Here's the list, Count. Later, if I get free, I want to talk to Captain Gonzalez. If he's told where that gang's hiding, he may be able to defeat Perez once and for all. Huh? Get him! Get him up, Scout! Reaching Spruce Canyon, the Lone Ranger halted again and, with Tonto's aid, assumed a disguise. Then, when the Indians' keen ears heard the far off sound of approaching hoofs, the Lone Ranger rode boldly into the outlaw's camp. Who, oh, fellow? Who, oh, boy? Who? Oh. Who comes? Take me to your leader. Who is there? A gringo, Excellency. Yeah, Fernando Perez. See. Si. And you, Senor. I'll step inside. I think you can guess my business. It would be better if we have privacy. You are Senor Merrick? These letters should identify me. Mm, it is so. But Senor Fisher, where is he? Why does he not come? He met with some trouble. He'll be long very soon, however. Trouble? Then why... I do... haven't much time. Let's get down to terms. Here. Sit down, Perez. You are very sudden, Senor. You are in a big hurry, no? You can understand why. Of a certainty. I don't believe in preliminaries. You know what I want. I know what you want. The only thing that remains to be settled is the exact terms and the manner of carrying them out. You put it well. I'll hear what you have to say first, Perez. If I don't like it, I'll tell you. Senor from the north, perhaps you do not understand me. I am Fernando Perez, a great liberator. My heart, she bleed for my poor countrymen. You needn't pretend for my benefit. I'm still waiting to hear your terms. I will need money, much money. You comprehend how these things are? I understand. 
How much money? One hundred thousand dollars. That's a large figure. But think, senor, in one year, in one year only, you will make twice one hundred thousand dollars from the ground in gold alone. Very well. And what more? I need arms, senor. Arms for a thousand men. You haven't a thousand men. I doubt that you've got three hundred. <laughs> that is so. But with money and arms, I will soon have plenty more. Outlaws like yourself. Senor! I do not like the way you speak. I said once we needn't pretend. I know you're nothing but an outlaw, no matter what you call yourself. And you know it. We'll leave it like that. What is that? Link, probably. Step over here, Perez. Wait in the window. There's something to show you. I don't want your men to see it. You show me something? This. The I move and I'll show you. Hey, what? You, you're the man. I'm the man you met wearing a mask. Inside, Merrick. You imposter. You call him Senor Merrick? He is Merrick. I never claimed to be, did I? Caramba, what is this? Stand where you are. I found out what I wanted, and I'm leaving. Don't try to stop me. Chris, what have you told that fellow? He's outside. After him. Oh, After him. Catch him. A hundred, five hundred people. For the hombre to catch him. Tell your man to stay where they are. They ain't got no more chance of catching that fellow than you have a dodge in the road. But if he is not Senor Merrick, then he's a spy. Well, that's just half of it. So? That hombre is the lone ranger. You and all your men can chase after him from now till Merrick here turns on us. And then you won't catch him. Because a horse that can outrun that white stallion of his just ain't been born. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger left the half-breed's camp, he rode across the hills into the valley and over the level plain toward the distant garrison of dragoons commanded by Captain Gonzales. The sun had risen and the garrison was astir before he reached his destination. At the sight of the powerful white horse beating toward the small cluster of buildings, a company of men shouted the greetings. When the startled soldiers saw that the Lone Ranger was masked and were about to fire at him, Captain Gonzales raised his hand in a sharp warning gesture. Then he called out to the approaching horsemen. It is the masked hombre. My friend, you are welcome. Oh, 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 what brings you here? <laughs> you remember me, Captain? Always have a remember, senor, with the mask. You have been a friend to me and to my country. I bring you news. See? News of Fernando Perez. Perez, Pete. He's a blood on Mexico. Captain, I can take you to him. His men are on the hills to the east. You can take me there, senor? Bueno. Oh, but no, it is no use. No use? You see me a captain of dragoons, my friend, and without arms. No, senor, it cannot be. What use are my brave hombres if they have not the guns with which to fight? Why haven't they? I have been sent arms, but they are mucho malo. They are no good. Old guns, senor. Guns that will not shoot. More grafting army contractors, huh? See, si. I have other news. And that? I don't take pride in telling you, Captain Gonzalez. Does my countrymen no honor, but you will have to know. See, si. There are certain American men with a great deal of money who realize that a decisive stroke now might force you and your men out of this district. They are willing to pay to see that stroke delivered. I have heard rumors. I have more than rumors to go on. I have the facts. How do you find this out? A friend of Tato's, one of your countrymen... So Perez is forced to join his gang, was able to warn us that Perez expected visitors from the north last night. That gave me a chance to find out definitely that those Americans are going to give Perez help, both with money and arms. And Tonto, where is he? He remained behind to learn their plans if possible. He'll meet me here. That is well. You and I, my friend, we shall have the chance to talk. And perhaps, Captain, when Tonto arrives, we'll have the chance to act. Several hours later, the Tonto arrived to join the masked man and Captain Gonzalez. The news he brought was all that the Lone Ranger needed to put his plan into action. Captain, I think your problem is solved. Solved? Tonto has told us that Link Fisher and his men will have the arms ready for smuggling across the border in about two weeks. Then what will we do, senor? I cannot get the arms for my men in two weeks. But you can. Eh? The arms Link will bring into the country. We'll take them. But how, senor? We do not know how they will be sent. 
We do not know what trail they will take, what night they will choose. Tonto and I will take care of that. But Tonto, he said Perez is sending an escort to guard the arms. How can my men attack? Tonto also said that Perez would send a messenger to Lincoln Merrick with a map telling what route the wagons with arms should follow to cross the Rio Grande. See, but I do Here, Silver. Call Scout Kimosabe. We're riding. Here, Scout. You have this plan? Just the beginnings of one, Captain. Then what is this plan? Just an idea. I'll have to know more before I can work it out. Ready, Tonto? Huh? Tonto, ready. We're returning to the hills, Captain, but you'll hear from us. Come on, Get Tonto. Get out, Days passed slowly. Captain Gonzalez, knowing the fate of the territory and trusted to his protection hung in the balance, was impatient for a word from the masked man. Fernando Perez, preparing to strike at the earliest moment, assembled his ragged forces in the hills. North of the border, Merrick and Link Fisher busied themselves with their conspiracy. On an evening two weeks later, they were seated at a table in the cafe at High Mesa, a small town west of El Paso. And Everything is ready, Link. Close to it, Mr. Merrick. Roof was to pick up them last cases of guns today. Did you get them? Most likely. He'll be here before long to report. If anything had gone wrong, we'd have heard from him before this. Uh, here he comes now. Howdy, Mr. Merrick. Howdy, Link. Sit down. Sure. Get them guns. Give the word and we'll start. Perez man was to reach here early this evening. Why doesn't he come? Oh, well, don't get mad. What I've seen I... a breed come up the road on horseback just as I was coming in. Maybe that was him. Then where is he? If it's the one you're looking for, he's likely just about hitching his horse to the wreck. Hey, who's that? Pedro. That's the fellow, Mr. Merrick. Good. Hi there, Pedro. Over here. Uh, good evening, senor. Evening. Have a chair and rest your bones. Ah, uh, gracias. There is give you something to bring us, Pedro. Here. Here's this. The map. Here. Let's see. Uh, sure, this won't be hard to follow. We'll head for Vermilion Creek. On the long side, it enters the Rio and cross just above. I recollect that cross is a good one. Then we'd better. <laughs> What's funny? What's funny, Pedro? It's most funny, Pedro. I laugh because tonight I meet the man with mask. And he find nothing. What's that? The mask man. What happened? If he's seen this man. No, he's not see it. This is what is funny. He stopped me, hold a gun on me, search me. Oh, he searched most well. He searched from head to foot and still he find nothing. Yes? Yeah. For all the time he searched me, the map she's safe in my saddlebag. And there he's not look. Where was that engine he travels with? Uh, the redskin I do not see, amigo. That was a close one. And he's still taking a hand in this game. I say we should get those arms across the border before he does discover something. Right now. I'm with you on that. Come on, fellas. We'll be across before daylight if we get a hustle on. The president have an escort waiting for us. See, senor. You need have no fear of the soldier. Good. Into your saddles, friends. Tonight we do things. Merrick and his companions made their way from town and raced to the isolated arroyo where the arms and wagons were concealed. Orders were shouted. The wagons hitched up. The secret journey to the Rio Grande begun. And the horses for Vermilion Creek. Come on, get started. <laughs> Vermilion Creek was found and followed southward. A bright moon lit the way for the caravan. It revealed the level valley for miles, but there was no sign of United States troopers. At last they reached the Rio Grande, and as the last wagons struggled up the farther bank, a band of shabbily dressed horsemen appeared from beyond the rise. They shouted the greetings from the distance, and Link replied with, Howdy, friends! We got here all right. We brought your guns and ammunition aplenty. If you escort from Perez, fellas. <laughs> Now to reach the hills, pass out these guns and watch the lid blow off. <laughs> in the meantime, Perez waited in the cabin that served him as headquarters for the escort he had dispatched to return to the wagon. Hour after hour passed. He had expected their arrival shortly after dawn. But the sun rose, climbed the eastern sky, and was almost midway in the heavens, and the sound of hoofs sent him eagerly to the door. Diablo, the arms, what are the wagons, what has happened? 
I have the wagons not here. Oh, oh, oh. My general, the wagons do not come. Impossible. But it is so. I swear it. We wait while we are told. I send men to ride this way, that way, to hunt them out. But they are not to be found. You be fool. You have made the mistake. No, no. Something has gone wrong. Ah. What will we do? You. When I find the hombre who is responsible for this, I will kill him. him. Sapristi. The dragoons. They dare not attack us. They have no arms. But look. They come. Diablo. Fire. led the fierce charge upon the stronghold of the outlaws. Behind him came Tonto, and behind Tonto, leading his shouting exultant men, came Captain Gonzalez. The battle was soon joined. Perez, desperate, terrified, unable to understand what had happened, frantically urged his forces to resistance. In the better part of an hour, the fighting raged between soldiers and outlaws. And wherever the need was the greatest, there was a masked man. Help them, kill them! This way, Tonto! Help them! Help them! The outlaws, though outnumbering the soldiers, soon lost all spirit for the fight. At first singly, then in increasing numbers, they threw down their arms and begged to be spared. At last, even Perez, though he knew death before a firing squad awaited his capture, conceded defeat. He dropped his gun, raised his hands high above his head, and stumbled toward Captain Gonzalez. I give up. Mercy, Captain. Mercy. I give up. Mercy. Mercy, please. Mercy. The battle won, Captain Gonzalez gathered the leaders of the conspiracy in the cabin that had belonged to Fernando Perez. There the masked man pointed toward the cringing figure of Merrick. Captain, this is the man behind the whole thing. It was his money that financed these outlaws, his partners in the East. Your government acts through Washington. They'll get the punishment they deserve. That will be done, my friend. Well, I should I still don't savvy this. How'd you get on to where we planned to cross the river with the wagons? Pedro said you'd never seen the map he brought us. You couldn't just guess it. I didn't see the map. Then how did you... Tonto did. I kept Pedro's attention while I searched him. Tonto went through the saddlebags. He found the map, made a few changes, then replaced it. (laughs) We fooled Pedro good. (laughs) As a matter of fact, you never had a chance. We knew you had the arms and wagons concealed in that arroyo, waiting for word from Perez. I don't believe it. You knew so much, why did you let us start out at all? Why did you just report us to the American soldiers? For a very good reason. They would have confiscated the arms, and the plot would have been spoiled. Perez, however, would still have been at large. This way we capture you, the arms, Perez, and finish it all up at once. Yeah, I should have known better than to take a job that send me up again to mask, man. Merrick, I told you what was likely to happen. Uh, how was I to know? And that trick of the mask man's in having the soldiers dressed up like they were from Perez and beating us at the border like they was the escort we was looking for. That's the trick that's done for us. Well, by thunder, the next time Not I... Senor Fisher, there will be no next time. You will get what you deserve. And look, there is the man who has saved this valley for my country. Come on, Silver, old boy! There's adventure on the trail ahead! Hello, 
just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. If you are enjoying these trips back in time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you would like to get notifications of new uploads, click on the bell icon. And that's the way it was, February 1st, 1939. That was the uh, Lone Ranger and Pat O'Daniel. So, uh, yeah, not, not much on that date, but hey, at least we're just trucking along through 1939, going all the way up to December 31st, 1945, reliving uh, the World War II years as they happened. Tomorrow, guess what? For the first time in a couple weeks, I do have a uh, good news of 1939 program, so we will have an upload tomorrow. It'll be an hour-long upload with just that uh, good news program. So uh, come on back at the same time, same bat time, same bat station. <laughs> uh, so until then, let's turn off our radio. That's our time machine. And uh, good night. God bless.